Is that loud enough to allow you? It's okay? Thanks for the feedback. Sorry. Thank you for the feedback. Please join me as we call one another to the act and attitude of worship as printed in your bulletin. Let us give thanks to God our prayer for all the gifts so freely bestowed upon us and for the beauty and wonder of your creation in the earth and sky and sea. We thank you, Lord, for the richness of the mountains, plains, and rivers. We thank you, Lord, for all that is gracious in the lives of men and women. We thank you, Lord, for all creatures that breathe and move and have life. We thank you, Lord, for the songs of birds and the loveliness of flowers and trees. We thank you, Lord, that we may love and honor all of your works, O oh God. We praise you, Lord, that we may continue to grow in our grateful enjoyment of your abundant creation. To the honor and glory of your name, now and forever, we thank you. Amen. Amen. Our hymn of praise, Morning Has Broken, number 53, 53 in the Red Hymnal. <laughs> join me in an Easter prayer of praise and celebration. O oh God, God most high, high by your by word, word created, created a wondrous universe, universe. And, and through your, your spirit, spirit you breathed into, into it the breath of life. life. Accept creation's hymn of praise, of praise from our lips and, and let, let the praise that is sung, sung in heaven resound in the heart of every creature on earth. To the glory of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen.
responsive reading. O Lord our God, how majestic is your name throughout the universe. Even the newborn infants declare your glory. The vastness of the heavens is your refuge. Making even the angry souls all silent. When I look at the vast sky, the handiwork of your fingers, the moon and the stars that you arrange. I say, what wonder you that you are mindful of us, that in our smallness you will care for us. Yet you have gifted us with divine awareness. And anointed us with light and spirit. You give us responsibility for the works of your hands. You make us stewards of creation. Not only the livestock and house animals, but the wild creatures, the birds and the fish, and all the inhabitants of the earth. O Lord our God, how majestic is your name throughout the universe. attention to Genesis chapter 1 verses 1 through chapter 2 verse 20 verse 4 and uh, I'll do the reading from the Old Testament today in the beginning God created the heaven and the earth and the earth was without form and void and darkness was upon the face of the deep and the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters and God said let there be light and there was light And God saw the light, that it was good. 
and God divided the light from the darkness. And God called the light day, and the darkness he called night, and the evening and the morning were the first day. And God said, let there be a firmament in the midst of the waters, and let it divide the waters from the waters. And God made the firmament and divided the waters which were under the firmament from the waters which were above the firmament, and it was so. And God called the firmament heaven, and the evening and the morning were the second day. And God said, let the waters under the heaven be gathered together unto one place, and let the dry land appear. And it was so. And God called the dry land earth, and the gathering together of the waters he called the seas. And God saw that it was good. And God said, let the earth bring forth grass, the herb yielding seed, and the fruit tree yielding fruit after his kind whose seed is in itself upon the earth, and it was so. And the earth brought forth grass, and herb yielding seed after his kind, and the tree yielding fruit, whose seed was in itself after his kind, and God saw that it was good. And the evening and the morning were the third day. And God said, let there be lights in the firmament of the heaven to divide the day from the night, and let them be for signs, and for seasons, and for days and years. And let them be for lights in the firmament of the heaven, to give light upon the earth. And it was so. And God made two great lights, the greater light to rule the day, and the lesser light to rule the night. He made the stars also. And God set them in the firmament of the heaven to give light upon the earth and to rule over the day and over the night, and to divide the light from the darkness. And God saw that this was good. And the evening and the morning were the fourth day. And God said, let the waters bring forth abundantly the moving creature that hath life, and the fowl that may fly above the earth in the open firmament of heaven. And God created the great whales and every living creature that moveth, which the waters brought forth abundantly after their kind and every winged fowl after his kind. And God saw that it was good. And God blessed them, saying, Be fruitful and multiply, and fill the waters in the seas, and let the fowl multiply in the earth. And the evening and the morning were the fifth day. And God said, Let the earth bring forth the living creature after his kind, cattle and creeping thing, and beast of the earth after his kind. And it was so. God made the beast of the earth after his kind, and the cattle after their kind, and everything that creepeth upon the earth after his kind, and God saw that it was good. And God said, Let us make man in our image, after our likeness, and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the fowl of the air, and over the cattle, and over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God created him, male and female, created, he created them. And God blessed them, and God said unto them, Be fruitful and multiply, and replenish the earth, and subdue it, and have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the fowl of the air, and over every living thing that moveth upon the earth. And God said, Behold, I have given you every herb bearing seed, which is upon the face of all the earth, and every tree in which is the fruit of a tree yielding seed, to you it shall be for me, and to every beast of the earth, and to every fowl of the air, and to everything that creepeth upon the earth, wherein there is life, I have given every green herb for me, and it was so. And God saw everything that he had made, and behold, it was very good. And the evening and the morning were the sixth day. Thus the heavens and the earth were finished, and all the host of them. And on the seventh day, God ended his work, which he had made, and he rested on the seventh day from all the work which he had made. And God blessed the seventh day and sanctified it, because that in which he had rested from all his work which God created and made. These are the generations of the heavens and of the earth when they were created in the day that Lord God made the earth and the heavens. 
So ends our reading of the Old Testament today. Morning, when I talked to Michael earlier this week and he still wasn't feeling well, he asked me if I had suggestions of things we could do and I said to him, are you forgetting we're East Church? We'll get this together. You stay home with Lisa and rest and we're doing great with that today. Would you pray with me? God, I ask that you calm my heart that I may share my words today and that things that I say, people can take something home from it and recognize and understand all the many beautiful, wonderful things you've given us in creation. Amen. I don't know about you, but after Easter and the joyous celebration of it, I am always so excited to know it's the season of spring has arrived, arrived with a sense of renewed hope, with life springing triumphantly out of the grave of winter. And I think we're all more than relieved winter is over. Under the blessing and inspiration of the sky in its most tender, loveliest, and most delicate forms, the sounds, the sights, the smells of nature all begin anew. The joy of a spring day revives a person's spirit whether window box planting, hearing the chirp of a sparrow, or feeling a morning breeze. Here, we are all able to find the beauty of God's wonderful creation. In Job chapter 12, it states, but ask the animals and they will teach you, or the birds in the sky and they will tell you, or speak to the earth and it will teach you or let the fish in the sea inform you. In God's hand is the life of every creature and the breath of all mankind. Henri Nouwen, a Catholic priest, inspires us to take up our calling as stewards of God's creation and to appreciate all the animals and all the created things that are part of God's beloved family. God is the father of all living things, and we are his siblings. To paraphrase it, he writes, When we think of oceans and mountains and forests and deserts, plants, animals, the sun, the moon, the stars, and all galaxy as God's creation, we can only stand in awe of the full wheat, the snow-capped mountains, and the roaring seas the wild and tame animals, the huge redwoods down to the tiny little daisies. Everything in creation belongs with us to the large family of God. From my earliest memories, I have always loved and been fascinated with creatures of any kind. My mother would stop by the side of the road to allow us to observe the deer in the field, walk with us to the edge of the river, to see the turtle laying her eggs, or hold us on her lap, whispering shh softly into our ears while we would watch the hummingbirds at the feeder. My mother taught us that God's great earth had so much to offer if we stop and take a moment to acknowledge the surroundings. In a hit song, 1974, of Mac Davis, Stop and Smell the Roses, he says, did you ever take a walk through the forest and dream a while among the trees? When you look up through the leaves right straight to heaven, you can almost hear the voice of God in each and every breeze. You've got to stop and smell the roses. You've got to count your many blessings every day. You're going to find your way to heaven is a rough and rocky road if you don't stop and smell the roses along the way. My life is richer and fuller because of the incredible gift of wonder that my mother instilled in me. I don't expect that most of you have the same immense love or excitement that I have for animals. Yes, I know, I'm way over the top. And if you can't relate, that's okay. 
But this morning, I'm asking you to open up your hearts and minds just a little bit as I discuss instances of various animal behaviors from which we can learn. Mark Beckoff, author of The Emotional Lives of Animals, states that science has discovered a lot about the inner lives of diverse species and gained insight into the emotional lives of animals. We know now that animals do experience feelings. They offer us a unique opportunity to transcend the boundaries of our human perspectives, allowing us to stretch our consciousness towards understand what it is like to be different. This stretching enables us to grow excuse me, beyond our narrow viewpoint and allows us to gain a spiritual advantage. How can we possibly appreciate and move towards spiritual wholeness if we can't see beyond our own species? How can we come to know God or grasp the interconnectedness of all life if we limit ourselves to knowing only our own kind? The goal of compassion is not to care because someone is like us, but to care because they are themselves. Research has shown that animals are capable of great depths of emotions and complex systems of social cooperation. And we know that animals can care for each other and human beings. For example, they respect their elders. In African elephant tribes, matriarchs remain the leaders of the group until they die often well into their 60s or 70s, and the elephants benefit from having an elder matriarch's experience. Research has shown that elephant groups with older matriarchs are more effective at fighting off predatory lions. Matriarchs older than 60 did not show any signs of cognitive decline, and they are more success in recognizing and responding to predatory threats. Animals show signs of empathy and compassion. Anyone who's had a long time pet know that animals can be unbelievably attuned to human state of emotional and physical well-being. Studies have shown that dogs yawn more in response to their owner's yawns than to others which suggests that dogs are empathetic towards their owners. Plenty of research suggests animals are capable of great depths of empathy. In one study, Carolyn Zahn Waxler from the National Institute of Mental Health had intended to examine young children's emotional responses to family members' emotions, but found that some pets showed as much worry as children when their adult owners feigned distress. The pets would stick near their owners and put their heads on their laps in response to the display of emotions. In 1964 study, psychiatrist Jules Massersman found that rhesus monkeys refused to pull a chain that would deliver food if doing so would hurt another monkey. One monkey avoided pulling the chain for 12 days, virtually starving to avoid hurting a companion. I had a house rabbit that was litter box trained and when my mother died, I would often sit and cry and I don't know where the rabbit would be and he'd come hopping, jump up onto the couch get on top of me and would lick my tears as they ran down my face when I would cry. Now, maybe they, he thought I was a salt lick, I don't know. But I would like to think that it was more than that. Also, when a female dolphin is in labor, she has two midwife female dolphins. One that is ready to push the baby up to the surface to get its first breath and the other one to help the mother get to the surface to get her first breath. I just, I think that's absolutely amazing. 
Animals are nice to their neighbors. According to BBC Nature, monkeys who live in groups often exhibit highly pro-social behaviors. Red colobus monkeys are so friendly that they even socialize with members of other colonies, grooming them as a sign of friendliness and respect. Baboons are also highly social, sometimes interacting with neighboring groups of chimpanzees, two species that work together. Animals sense other people's feelings. We've all heard that animals detect fear, but their ability to tap into what others are thinking and feeling, even subconsciously, extends far beyond sensing either weakness or a threat. In one particular extraordinary case, a cat named Oscar lived at a Rhode Island nursing home and could predict the deaths of elderly individuals. He would plant himself on the patient's bed hours before they died. He would not leave, you could not get him off the bed, he would just stay there. His mere presence at the bedside is viewed by such physicians and nursing home staff as an almost absolute indicator of impending death, allowing staff members to adequately notify families, Dr. Davis Rosa wrote in the New England Journal of Medicine. Oscar has also provided companionship to those who would otherwise have died alone. For his work, he is highly regarded by physicians and staff at the Steerhouse and by the family of the residents whom he serves. <coughs> animals help each other out. Elephants are some of the smartest animals in the animal kingdom when it comes to working together. Evolutionary psychologists have found that elephants are highly adept in social coordination when pursuing shared goals. A Cambridge study found that elephants can learn to coordinate with a partner on a task that required the pair to simultaneously pull two ends of the same rope in order to obtain a reward. Not only did they act effectively together, but if their partner was delayed, they would wait until the partner was ready. Animals find love in a hopeless place. An unlikely love affair between a swan and a tractor reveals an important truth from the animal kingdom. Love is blind, and it can be found in even some of the most surprising places. Swans mate for life, and when eight-year-old Shawani could not find another swan to be with, he sought partnership elsewhere. At a German hotel, the swan became infatuated with the groundskeeper's tractor. <laughs> According to CBS News, Shawani can't get enough of the mechanical companion. He follows the groundskeeper around all the time, no matter where he goes, whether he crosses the street or goes into the garden to take care of the pathways, the swan comes along. And if the man takes a break, the swan stands right next to the tractor, as if ready to get in. Animals make love last. Many species of animals mate for life, including swans, wolves, albatross, termites, bald eagles, gibbons. Most bird species that mate for life, like eagles, pigeons, and turtle doves, will only choose another partner after their mate has died. Changing views and letting go. The eagle has eight times the sight ability of humans. Treetop perches provide birds with roosting spots and favorable hunting views. They react to the slightest disturbances and can see the smallest speck down on the ground in detail. Eagles are highly attuned to receive information and are sensitive to our, their surroundings. The eagle can bring us lessons on how to develop the ability to detach and observe and to know when to participate and when to change views and let go. They illustrate how to delve into waters, grasp what is needed, and emerge with new sustenance. 
we too can grasp what is needed and emerge cleansed with new tools and energy obtained through our efforts. All of life has a role in this world. No matter how exciting or revolting we might perceive an animal to be, every creature contributes something. I might not, however, agree with that for the mosquito. Observing and learning from animals can change our views of life. I believe that God has a special love for animals and that they will put on this earth for us to enjoy their beauty, love, companionship. We can rejoice in life with them, learn from them, and share these gifts with the rest of creation. Once we embrace these spiritual lessons that animals can teach us, we can find spiritual direction by overcoming the mundane and embracing the sacred. We can transcend words and discover new frontiers of spirituality and consciousness. In a field, there were two horses. From a distance, each horse looks like any other horse. But if you stop your car or are walking by, you will notice something quite amazing. Looking into the eyes of one of the horses, you will discover that he is blind. His owner has chosen not to have him put down, but has made a good home for him. This alone is amazing. If you stand by and listen, you will hear the sound of a bell. Looking around the source of the sound, you will see that it comes from a smaller horse in the field. Attached to that horse's halter is a, the bell. It lets the blind friend know where the other horse is so he can follow. As you stand to watch these two horses, you'll see that the horse with the bell is always checking on the blind horse and that the blind horse will listen for the bell and then slowly walk to the other horse, trusting that he will not be led astray. When the horse with the bell returns to the shelter of the barn each evening, it stops occasionally and looks back, making sure that the blind friend isn't too far behind to hear the bell. Like the owner of these two horses, God does not throw us away just because we are not perfect or because we have problems or challenges. He watches over us and even brings others into our lives to help us when we are in need. Sometimes we are the blind horse being guided by the little ringing bell of those who God places in our lives. Other times we are the guide horse helping others to find their way. I ask you to listen for the bell of others and let them listen to yours. And remember, be kinder than necessary. Everyone you meet is struggling on their journey here on earth. So today I ask you to live simply, to love generously, care deeply, speak kindly, and then leave the rest to God. Amen.
may be seated. I love the way I automatically go into the choir. <laughs> That's right. Uh, we come to our, our time of prayer, and we're so blessed that we know that God listens to us, whether we're here in the sanctuary, whether we're online. Um, for those of us who cannot be with us, uh, God cares from our heart. Everything that that is our concern, that is our joy, um, and grateful we are for it. Um, we have uh, a few prayers to lift up that I invite others to as well. Um, want to first off lift up the Ukraine and for any country that or people that are victims of war, you know, that justice may prevail, that peace may prevail. Uh, on this day after Earth Day, I, I give thanks for those that have taken the lead and hope that we are all inspired to do our part to keep this world sustainable and, and honoring all creation. I lift up in prayer Michael and Lisa and all of their family. And uh, I understand that they are improving and they're doing better and uh, that is a blessing. Hope that they can return to us soon. I want to lift up in prayer Pete Corson, who I understand is home and doing better and walking around. And uh, so all those are good things. You ready to help with the housework pretty soon. <laughs> <laughs> I want to lift up in prayer Dick Hammond and Joy. Dick is doing better. He is back to his cottage. He is out of the healthcare facility nursing floor itself and back home in his cottage and uh, getting ready to raise Cain with the rest of us. And we'll have to see him back soon, too. Uh, I, uh, I want to lift up my friend Sue, who has lost her husband this past week, and uh, Sue um, Blossom. Sue Hoffman Blossom, uh, they, her family, uh, longtime friends of East Church, and uh, she knows our prayers are, are with her. And for all those who have lost loved ones recently, um, Doug, your family, over the loss of your wife, let us be reassured in, in great comfort that God says that those that we lose are not gone. They are yet in another room in this house of many mansions, mm -hmm. and our hearts go out to all of them. Are there uh, are there others that we can bring up? Just yes, to Chris. Mention to the other countries that are helping Ukrainians with their families. And, you know, they're putting out themselves to bring in others and providing their food. Mm -hmm. Yes, indeed. You know, this is a worldwide effort and you know, give praise for those who step up. Anyone else today? All right, then. Let's bow our head in prayer. Dear Lord, thank you for your many blessings and for your comforts and your reassurances. Thank you for your inspiration to work for sustainability for all creation on earth. We give you our thanks. We tend to give you our burdens, knowing that you will be there with us. And we pray to you, as Jesus taught us to pray, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen.
good gifts come from God, let us in return give a portion of our abundance joyfully to continue God's work on earth. The morning offering will now be taken. <laughs> after the service. There are birthday cards and pens. And if you just want to say, I thought I'd say, oh, happy birthday, Dick. I hope you get well soon. But now I can say, happy birthday, Dick. This is great news. So I don't care whether you know him or not. He's a great guy. Just take a card, <laughs> fill it out, tell him congratulations. And uh, he's still healing, but he's doing very well. And Cynthia says his spirits are considerably lifted, as happy, you can all understand. Happy to be home. Happy to be home. So please do take a card. There's a basket there. No stamp required. I'll get it to him. But please do that. And please do join us for refreshments today. Um, Church World Service, our little engine that could, mm -hmm. has 75 kits complete. Wow. Yeah, I know. And uh, we would love to get that number higher. There are quite a few supplies there that you can use. You don't have to get everything in the kit. We've already got washcloths, we've got combs, we've got nail trimmers, but take a look at the list and if you would like to complete using those materials, plus whatever you need to fill in, that would be wonderful. These kits are, go all over the world and they make a difference in the lives of people who need them. Let's see, church will service. Okay. Yes. Next Sunday is the last Sunday. Ah, thank you, Sherry. Next Sunday is the last Sunday, so we'll need to have things in by next Sunday. Another thing that has to happen for the kits is that it takes a $2 donation per kit 
to handle processing mail-in costs. If you would like to make a donation toward that in any amount, you can direct that to Sherry or Julie. And if you have it in an envelope, uh, be sure you mark what it's intended for so we can respect your intentions. Okay, that'd be great. Uh, chat regarding the yard sale. That's my last thing. We had two very successful yard sales last summer, and we would like to continue that tradition. So I just have a little bit of information for people, things to think about, would like to hear your ideas. I won't keep you more than five or 10 minutes, I promise. But if you can come back, get your refreshments, and we can just chat for a few minutes about um, hopefully two more successful yard sales this year. Refreshments, yard sale, Dick Hammond, and Church World Service Kits. I think that's it. Is there anything that I missed? No? Going, going, gone? So let's sing our hymn of dedication, 696. 696. <laughs> Thank you. 